Hi, I'm Juru the Time Traveler and this is my Lifestyle Time Travel Blog. Today we are talking about the celebration of spring in the antiquity. Finally the spring is here and of course it was celebrated even during the antiquity. Ancient Greeks and ancient Romans celebrated the cycle of the year, so the rebirth of nature. But in different ways and differently than we celebrate it today. Today the turning point of the season is its beginning, so the spring equinox but they didn't pay much attention to this particular date. Ancient Greeks ensured the beginning of spring even mythologically. So that is actually the way in which they explained changes of seasons and especially the beginning of spring. And these changes of seasons were explained by a myth of Hades and Persephone. This is the story about Persephone, the goddess of the underworld and spring. She was daughter of Zeus and Dimitri. She was the goddess of fertility and agriculture. And she was exactly like her mother. She loved nature, she was one with the nature. She loved flowers, trees and animals. And all that was truly appealing to Hades, the god of the underworld. So he wanted to take her and make her his wife. And one day she was minding her own business, you know, just picking flowers, enjoying the spring, when Hades appeared. So the earth crumbled and he ascended from the earth in all his glory and majesty. And he abducted her. But previously he asked Zeus for permission and he ruled. Meanwhile, Dimitri was devastated by the disappearance of her daughter. So Dimitri started to wander around the earth looking for her daughter. And since she was the goddess of fertility, she went on strike. So the earth became barren and people started to die from famine. So Zeus felt sorry for starving people, so he wanted to tell. So he sent his loyal messenger Hermes to the underworld to bring back Persephone. During her stay in underworld, Persephone slowly developed feelings for Hades. Hades had no other choice but to let her go. But before she left the underworld, Hades gave her pomegranate seed. Well, according to the ancient law, when you take something from the underworld, you are forever bound to this place. So Zeus had no other choice but to make a compromise. And they all agreed that one third of the year Persephone will stay with her beloved husband and two thirds of the year she will return to her mother. And that's how seasons were born. So every time when Persephone visits her mother the whole nature blossoms and we got spring, summer and when she returns to her loyal husband everything dies down. So we have winter and partially autumn. Now back to you, Jura. This myth became the basis for the Eleusinian Mysteries, one of secret religious rites in ancient Greece. And because it was a mystery, which means that only the initiated people could participate in this cult, it was a secret, and it is still today. We don't know much about it, but we know that it was celebrated at the Panhellenic Sanctuary of Eleusis near Athens, in the suburbs of Athens. Which means that at one point at least every Greek could participate in this cult. I mean, at least if he hasn't murdered anyone during his life. This is actually an old agricultural cult which goes back to the Mycenaean period. And during these mysteries, three phases of Persephone's life are celebrated. First, her abduction. Then, second, the Dimitri's search for her daughter. And in the end, her return to the world of the living. There were two Eleusinian mysteries, lesser and greater Eleusinian mysteries. The first or the lesser mysteries were held during the month of Antesterion, which is February-March in today's time. And the greater mysteries were held during Boedromion, which is September or October in today's time. So here we have this natural cycle, this cycle of sowing and harvest, spring and autumn. But if you wanted to attend the greater mysteries, you had to pass the initiation, which was held during the lesser mysteries. And to become a part of this selected group of people, you had to first sacrifice a piglet, then to purify yourself by bathing in the river Ilysus. 
The examples of seasonal cycle we can see also in the Oracle of Delphi. This oracle was dedicated to Apollo, and everybody went to Delphi to hear famous prophecies of its oracle, Pythia. She was always selected from the elite members of the society, so people consulted her before wars or before making a big decision. But you can go to her whenever you wanted because she didn't give any prophecies during winter. And here's why. This was dedicated to Apollo and he actually lived here. But during winter, when his favorite constellations Lyra and Cygnus were not visible, he went to Hyperborea to cleanse because he murdered Python. You know, he had to repent because he took his land. Python was guarding the Omphalos or the navel of the world, so the center of the world. And Apollo killed him and took his territory. And that is where he built the Oracle of Delphi. So from winter solstice to spring equinox, Apollo is not present at Delphi and Oracle cannot perform her prophecies. But here's another version of why she didn't make any prophecies during winter. Pythia was probably inhaling gases and that is what triggered her prophecies and her visions. But this gas flow that induced trance was diminished during winter, so she didn't have any means to do her work. Now let's see how Romans celebrated spring. Their spring began at different time than ours. Varro says that spring begins when sun is in Aquarius, summer when sun is in Taurus, fall when sun is in Leo and winter when sun is in Scorpio. Actually on the 23rd day when sun is in these signs. So this means that Roman spring began during our winter, during February. But there is also another version of seasons. Varro also says that year can be divided into eight seasons. And then the second season begins exactly on spring equinox. If you think that this is confusing, listen this. Ancient Roman year was a lunar year with only 10 months and January and February didn't have a name. There were only winter. But the beginning of this year was in March, actually on 1st of March. Then Numa Pompilius, semi-mythological king of Rome, added January and February to the calendar. But they were at the end of the year, so still the year began on March the 1st. This was only changed in 153 BC when they switched to the beginning of New Year from March the 1st to January the 1st. So actually the original beginning of a Roman year was during spring and it probably makes more sense to celebrate the beginning of new year, new season with the reawakening of nature. On Collins of March or 1st of March there was a huge celebration in Rome and that was the festival of Mars. This was the day that marked the renewal of the year. So on this day Vestal Virgins tended the fire at the heart, so the sacred heart at the temple of Vesta. Also fresh laurels were placed on Regia, Flamines, so those are the priests during the Republic time, those were the priests assigned to 18 principal Roman deities, gods, and Curia Veteris. But the biggest event of this festival was the dance of Sally. Those were the priests of God Mars. They were selected from notable patrician families who had still living parents. And they were dressed in a military style. So they wore military tunics and military short capes, breastplates, even helmets and they had swords. In their right hands they held staff or a spear and in their left hands they held sacred shield. And this is an interesting story about the sacred shield. Only one of these shields was an original, the others were a copy. This was because the sacred shield fell from the sky and it was granted from Jupiter to Numa Pompilius, that second king of Rome. And because Numa was really afraid that someone would steal the shield, he ordered copies, so that potential thief could be confused. 
Now back to the ceremony. These priests performed elaborate dances. They went on the streets and they had certain checkpoints where they performed these dances. And they also sang to the sound of a flute. But these songs were in ancient Latin, so even the people back then couldn't understand what they were saying. And then they had a rich feast. The celebration lasted until the 24th of March or until the end of this month. And this was the celebration of the beginning of a new military campaign. But also Mars was the god of agriculture. So there is one interpretation that the beating of shields with arms during their performance is actually a way to ward off spirits. And the leaping, which was a significant part of their choreography, was actually a way to promote the growth of cereals. Now we're talking about the 15th of March or the festival of Anna Perena. Anna Perena was an ancient Roman deity of the cycle of the year and she was celebrated on the first full moon after the beginning of the year. She was represented as an old woman and sacrifices in her honor were performed publicly and privately. And people love to celebrate this holiday because this was the beginning of spring and Romans love to spend some time in the outdoors. And she was celebrated on the bank of the Tiber River next to the first milestone of the Flaminian Way. And the Flaminian Way was a road that connected Rome to Rimini, so the coast of the Adriatic Sea. And Ovid describes this festival. People were scattered around, they were lying on the grass, usually in couples, men and women. And they were dancing, they were singing some songs that they picked up in the theater, and they were drinking, and they were drinking a lot, and usually as much cups of wine as the years they wished to live. So for me, I would be dead immediately probably, and Cronus would live for eternity. Maybe that is his secret. And they performed sacrifices to ensure healthy and fertile year. And you might remember from this video about fountains, the fountain of Anna Perena. In this fountain, people threw cursed tablets and anthropomorphic figures in lead containers for Anna Perena to help them conduct some business in this world. Another interesting festival in Rome was held on 17th of March and it was called Liberalia. Liber and Libera were celebrated on that day. Liber was an ancient Roman god of fertility and wine. So in later days he was identified with Dionysus. He was also identified with the seed of a man and his counterpart Libera was identified with the seed of a woman. So they celebrated it by carrying a big phallus on a cart from the countryside to the town. This procession was accompanied with crude songs. And this was done for the sake of crops and to repel witchcraft from the fields. And on this day, Roman women, which were priestesses of Liber, were scattered around town and they wore crowns of ivy. They had cakes Liba, which were made of oil and honey, and small altars on which they performed sacrifice for customers. And Libera was later identified with Persephone and Prosepina, which is actually the Roman version of Persephone. And we are ending this March festivals with the festival of Magna Mater or Hilaria. It was held during the late imperial period. This festival was celebrated from 15th to 25th of March. And the story behind this festival is a rebirth story. So Atis was consort of Sibeli or Magna Mater. And this story includes resurrection, castration, eunuchs, whippings, theater performances and a pine tree. And this is a crazy long story, so we'll talk about that some other time. So these were all some variations of fertility festival. I don't know which one is your favorite, but mine is probably Anna Perena. Write down in comments which one is your favorite. Thank you for watching this video and you know what to do. Like, subscribe, share, send to all and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Thank you.